I think you've got to look at the small print of this offer. It's very easy to be critical of the governments. Let's face it, as Hazel Blairs will know, uh, Labour had a hell of a problem trying to get Gordon Brown to agree with Peter Mandelson on selling it, and it did incur massive losses. But thanks to Adam Crozier and more recently to Moyer Green, things are very much better on a much more scaled-down basis. The great thing we've had with IPOs or initial public offerings is there's tended to be agreed in getting the price right. And if you drain every last cent out of an IPO, you tend to put investors off because there's no nickel and dime for the first person who comes in. The real problem with trying to evaluate the Royal Mail is this question of what importance do you attach to what I call a pretty free and light touch regulation. The regulators have given Royal Mail the opportunity of moving prices for as many as 29 million people. Now to date the profit margin of the Royal Mail has been about 3%. Now over the next five years or so, if they do get the opportunity to remain competitive mm. and want to do their business, they could increase their margin of profitability between 5 and 10%. So that significantly gives them the opportunity. But you just never know quite what the likes of Federal uh, FedEx, also UPS, Deutsche Post, TNT, and all the other people who've been in business on a more international basis than the Royal Mail has. So I think it's been very difficult for both Vince Cable and also for Michael Fallon, but I think they've done an excellent job. They should not be criticised for undervaluing it grossly, because if you give people the encouragement to support businesses like this, you get a really good shareholder register, and it gives you opportunities of privatising other things at a later date. Are investors then set to make a fast and a big buck? Well, I think they are, because I think the issue is likely to be as much as ten times oversubscribed. In fact, people will be pared down quite dramatically, whether it's the 70% of institutional shareholders or the 30% of Joe, Joe Soaps like myself. We're going to get very disappointed in what we get. But it gives us a really good shareholder register, and I wouldn't be at all surprised. I'm not quite as enthusiastic as Gert Zonveld, my colleague, that would be uh, £4.50 uh, per share, but I think it could easily be 385 390